What's happening, everyone? Welcome to G-Ball Vision. I hope you are having an awesome day today or whenever you are watching this. Hope you are doing great. So today we are going to be taking a look at the AM8 Knives or Migaron Knives Gladiator 2. In this case, it is branded as AM8. Same company. If you remember, I ordered a big old package from Amazon. It contained four different items. The first of which that I pulled out of that big old package was the Kaiser Bugai. Uh, and you will have seen that video before this one. I will link a card up in the top right if you didn't get a chance to see it. But the reason you are not seeing the unboxing for this knife is because the audio got ruined about halfway through. The microphone that I was using, which is wireless, ended up dying, uh, ruining the whole video. Uh, so we are restarting and gonna just dive into this guy again. Thankfully, I watched the whole thing before posting it. But uh, guys, <laughs> AM8 and Migaron continue to get better and better. Uh, I bought one or two of their premium knives probably a year to a year and a half ago, and they were good. They were good. They, they missed on a few smaller things, but guys, as time has went on, they just keep getting better and better. So let's dive into this thing. You're getting stonewashed titanium handles and the stone wash on these looks awesome they're going to take wear very well uh, they're not going to get marred up very easily nice thick slabs of titanium you do have a backspacer there that is made out of titanium you have a lanyard hole that goes through and i don't think it bothers the aesthetic much being down here and out of the way uh, doesn't bother me much. Uh, if it was completely solid, yeah, it might look a little better, but being that far out of the way, doesn't, it, it don't do much to me. Uh, you do have some nice textured milling here, some milled lines, gives it a nice little aesthetic other than just being completely solid. Pivot looks great. You have anodized blue thumb studs front flipper with some nice jimping here. You have a 3D milled titanium pocket clip going right over that lock bar cutout, which a lot of people will appreciate. You do have some milling here and here. Great looking hardware. This is a great looking knife. Wait till we get this bad boy open. So let's give it a thumb flick. And guys, <laughs> this thing is freaking awesome. I, I'm i going to kind of lush over this thing. I lushed over it in the unboxing. I knew it looked good. And after getting the Prayer 2 from AM8 a couple weeks back, I knew that they were headed in the right direction. Uh, before we get real excited here, the thumb flick is great. The reverse flick is great. The action is just great phenomenal on thumb reverse and front flipper you can do all the things that you want with that front flipper it is jimped very very well it goes all the way up and over so you can just get the greatest traction on it easy intuitive absolutely love all of the opening methods uh, you're not going to lock yourself out on this thing. There's plenty of different places to put your hand. Uh, just a great, great multi-deployment knife. Now let's take a look at this beautiful blade. Uh, it's not bead blasted, so don't get your panties in a bunch. It is a high polished sandblast. So that is, and that's why it has that sheen to it. It's it's not just your typical sandblast. It's a high polish sandblast. And it looks good. Uh, and before we go too much further, I have not had any issues with any steel that has been sandblasted. Like 
speed blasting, I have had a ton of issues with corrosion issues. D2, 14C, M390, bead blasting destroys steel, in my opinion. Now, on the other hand, I have not had a single issue with anything that has been sandblasted. So I've heard sandblasting is the same thing. Well, obviously it's not. And then I've heard from other people it's a completely different procedure that is done. It must be different enough that you aren't going to experience corrosion issues, at least where I'm at with what I'm doing. Everyone is going to be different where they're located, what they're doing, all that sort of thing. But just to clarify, I have not had any issues with anything that has been sandblasted. Uh, what other big old deal is this thing going to be making? S90V making a tidal wave splash, guys. Uh, AMA is going in the right direction. They kind of are going off on their own road. They're not following the M390 guys, the 20CV guys. They're going off on their own road, and I'm going to follow them. Uh, S90V is my favorite steel, and it's going to continue to be my favorite steel. I've bought a bunch of knives in S90V over the last year. The most recent one until this one, the Skeleton Blades 2 Knives. Caledon and S90V has a hand rub satin S90V drop point blade, and it is absolutely beautiful. I love S90V. Look at those lines. Oh my goodness. This thing, spoiler alert, is a banger. You've probably seen the unboxing for this already. Uh, if not, I will have a card link for this one as well. But the Caledon is definitely. A banger so guys aim 8 just nails everything right now they're they're doing a phenomenal job minimal branding they have just this littlest logo up there and I applaud them for that uh, they don't have a big old logo in the center of the blade like some companies uh, now Kaiser we all tend to give them a pass because they typically nail almost everything else. But if Kaiser would just get rid of the Kaiser, take that logo and put it up here. We don't need this number, this ID number or whatever. Put the logo right here, you know, and be done with it and leave the blade nice and clean. Uh, and that's what AM8 does here, Migaron. I really, really appreciate that. And then all they literally have on the clip side is the steel marking. It's beautiful. It's so, so good. I appreciate it a ton. Uh, you know, the only other thing that I think would be acceptable is if you have the maker's mark or whatever, you know, the maker's designer's logo or name. You know, we don't need the name of the knife. We don't need the ID number. We don't need all that. You know, the, the the designer's maker's mark, fine. But we don't need the name of the knife. We know what we're buying. We don't need an ID number. We don't need all that. Uh, but we tend to give Kaiser a pass for that. But just an exceptional aesthetic to this knife. Uh, I, Migaron and AM8, I'm going to say it again. They are really headed in the right direction. I love this drop point blade. Such a beautiful blade. You have a nice swedge there going to the tip, making that tip nice and strong. Uh, wait till we get into some cutting here. The other thing, one of my other big old peeves, is when they don't chamfer that lock bar liner. And look what they did. They gave us nice paths, pass through and a nice smooth chamfer on that lock bar. And it does this knife complete justice. So comfortable to deactivate that lock bar. And the action on this thing is just ridiculous. 
it came completely centered nice tight tolerances absolutely no blade play it's locked up good there's no movement any which way uh the aesthetic is beautiful the ergos nice and comfortable you can choke up there behind that nice sharpening choil uh i i just s90v great aesthetic they nail all the little things i'm just pleasantly surprised pleasantly happy uh great job on their newer more premium line of knives and wait till you see the edge on this thing guys it is ridiculously sharp ridiculous and not that am8s don't typically come with a good edge because they do but this is one of the best edges that i've had in in a long time uh from factory this is really good uh pleasantly surprised in the unboxing that got ruined this was the last thing that i did and i was hoping it was going to be good but i was worried it wasn't going to be and they just absolutely nailed it they crushed this design they crushed the build the quality is off the charts uh i think these can be had for as low as like 150 to 160 and then they go up to like 180 ish 190 ish and guys that is nothing uh compared to like what we would charge you for this build what kaiser would probably even charge you for this build a lot of companies you'd be in the mid to high 250s for s90v titanium this type of build well over 200 at least uh and migron just continues to find a way to keep their knives competitively priced and at this point after getting the prayer two from am8 uh and now this i'm going to continue to follow am8 and when they put out a design that i like i'm gonna snag it because they just continue to do everything right and i am totally happy uh with with the outcome of this guy uh you're looking at three so this is about you're getting almost three and a half on your cutting edge it's a little shy at like seven sixteenths and then you're a little shy of you're at like three and seven eighths for your total blade length and then you're coming down around eight and uh five sixteenths to three eighths so it's a great great size i mean i have extra large hands and it just fills my hand great uh it's comfortable just giving it a nice squeeze i don't feel anything uh i i'm in love with this thing uh phenomenal phenomenal job from am8 that'll do it guys Hopefully that kind of, if you're looking for this knife, clears things up for you. If you're here and you're not subscribed, I would love to have you here. Hit the subscribe button down below the video. Give the video a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think of this guy. Let me know what you think of AM8 knives. If you have any video ideas that you would like to see me do, leave those down in the comments as well for the subscriber input series. I love hearing your guys' ideas. That'll do it for this one, guys. Love y'all, and I will catch you on the next one.